Good evening and welcome to Orient Life. The O's are looking to get back to winning wages this evening as we travel to Exeter on the road. And I'm absolutely delighted to be joining the studio this evening by over 12 hundred appearances worth of football knowledge so hopefully they'll be doing all the heavy lifting for us this evening uh, joined by none other than charlie lee and jabbo abire uh thank you for joining us this evening gents and, and charlie uh well first of all actually jabbo you were here on saturday the the stream didn't manage to go out but uh how how did you rate the o's performance on in that loss to colchester yeah um thanks for having me good to be here um yeah it was a uh, it was a frustrating afternoon, I'd say. Um, you know, they had a lot of possession, but they just, we didn't do enough with it. Um, and hopefully today, to this, this evening's game, we can we can put things right. Hopefully so, because I was going to come to you, Charlie, because you were obviously here uh, the game before that against uh, Newport. It was, and it was another loss, and it, it's been the theme of late. There, there hasn't been many points picked up by the O's, and it's, it's quite important that they do try and get back to winning ways tonight. Yeah, it's definitely been a frustrating time, and... They'll be they'll be really looking forward to, to tonight's game and hoping to, to get something out of it. Yeah, but Exeter is always a, a, a tough uh, game on the road, especially on a Tuesday night. Yeah, we were saying it earlier. They always seem to, to come up with these teams. They, they lose players over the years and they've got really good recruitment and they're always competitive and you always see them up there. Uh, they've been a really good team now for quite a while. Mm, they have. And uh, Jabbo, it's been 20 years since the O's won uh, away to Exeter. Mm. Um how big could a win be for the O's in, in trying to turn uh, this season around and getting higher up the table? Yeah, it could, it could be huge. I mean, you know, you, you get stats like that when you haven't won at a, at a certain ground in such a long time and then suddenly you get that result, everyone buzzes, you're, on, you're, you're, on, you're back on the coach, heading back into London and feeling good and it can, it can regalvanise the season. Well, hopefully that is the case. And of course, if you've got anything you'd like to ask Charlie or Jabbo, you can tweet them in using the hashtag Orient Live. And make sure you also follow our new Twitter account at LOFC Live. I will be bringing you all the latest news from the E10 studios. But now let's take a look at how Kenny Jacket is lining up for tonight's fixture. In goal for the O's, number 22, Lawrence Vigaru. Coming back into the side, number five, Dan Happy. And returning after a, a, a spell on the sidelines, number six, Adam Thompson, making his debut for the O's, Frank Nuble. Number 14, Otis Khan. 15, Alex Mitchell. 16, Aaron Drynan. Wearing the armband this evening is number 18, Darren Prattley. 19, Omar Beckles. 21, Matt Young. And 26, Hector Kiprianu. And on the subs bench for the O's this evening is Rhys Byrne, Callum Riley, Dan Moss, Ruel Sotiriu, Jaden Sweeney, Shadrach Ogi, And coming into the squad for the first time after signing his pro deal recently is young Sonny Fish. Um, so a few changes uh, for the O's this evening, Charlie. But I think the, the thing that's standing out is those four centre-backs. It looks as though Kenny's going to go quite defensive there this evening. Yeah, four centre-backs, that, that, that does shore you up. And uh, we'll be looking to see how they start. Maybe the formation maybe change, we, we don't know. But there's some good players in that in that defensive line. So they'll be looking to, to be solid and then maybe get maybe get extra on the counter-attack. And you said you've got quite a few memories from your, your playing days of coming up at Kenny Jacket's side where there are a lot of centre-backs. What's it like to, to, to come up against the side? So from Exeter's point of view this evening, what, what, what are they facing? Yeah, we've played against loads of teams over the years who, who have the extra centre-back, and it's tough. There's no way around it. Um, Exeter won't be pleased to see their team sheet. It's going to make it harder to break down, and there's some good players in there, and uh, they'll be looking to keep a clean sheet away from home. And, and, and Jabbo, obviously a, a familiar face in there to you, uh, Frank Nuble, um, a player you've probably come up against and, and played with throughout the years. Uh, he's making his debut tonight. What, what can the O's fans expect from him, do you think? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for him. Um, no pressure, Frank. But, um, you know, I think you can expect him to really get stuck in. He's a, he's a player that can, you know, he's got the, the spectacular goal in him. Every goal I've seen him score, there have been great goals, to be fair to him. He can dribble, he's strong, he's quick, he's tenacious. And, you know, I think he's, he's a perfect signing for, for what we need right now. And, and he's partnering Aaron Drynan, who first half of the season was sensational. The goals have dried up a little bit since Christmas. But do you think Frank can, can help kind of reignite that Orient attack? Yeah, 100%. I mean, as a player that, you know, the opposition defenders will be drawn to, which could create space for Dryden to, you know, be freer and, and get back on his goal trail. Um, but, you know, he's a good guy. He, he knows the league. He's experienced. And, you know, he, he's, he'd be, I'm looking forward to see how he plays today. 
and looking uh, as well as Otis Khan in, in that lineup. He's obviously a very attacking player. He's been playing at right back recently. Do you think that could be the case again uh, this evening or do you think Kenny might be trying to get him slightly further up the field with some of the choices he's made this evening? Yeah, we'll have to look and see the formation, but I, I can imagine with the, with the extra centre-back, they're going to be able to get him a lot higher. And I think even the last few games, there's been maybe a lack of chances, credit, but he, he has looked like being the one to, to do it. He put a f quite a few good crosses in here against Newport when I was here. So if you get him up the pitch, get him on the ball, he will make things happen. So really hoping he does. We're seeing some of, of Otis in, a, in action, Jabbo, and we're seeing glimpses here. He maybe hasn't shown the Orient fans exactly what he can do, but he's shown it in glimpses. You can definitely see what he's capable of doing and, and what he likes to do, you know, um, likes to be out wide, get a bit of a yard and you don't hesitate with whipping those balls in. As a centre forward, you like your winger or, or your full back to really get those balls in early so you can catch the opposition defence off guard. And, you know, he's strong, he's got low centre of gravity, you know, look here, early cross into a great area, just want your forwards to gamble and anticipate those runs. But, I mean... He's showing some promise and I'm quite excited to see how he goes as well. And What's impressed you, Charlie, uh, with, with what you've seen from Otis? You, you saw him on his debut here against Newport. Um, yeah, what, what, what are you hoping from young Otis? Not that young, but what are you expecting from Otis? Well, his delivery. I think we, we all know his delivery is good. And I think with the, with the line-up tonight, set-pieces are going to be a massive, massive part of this. If we're going to come out with a result, set-pieces could be the key. With, uh, with the big boys that you're starting, we'd like to see his delivery and I think that's what he's going to bring to the team. Mm. Well, we'll certainly see. Um, and looking then into the midfield, we've got three centre midfielders in there, Matt Young, Hector Kipriano and captain Darren Prattley. Matt Young played uh, almost as, I don't know, uh, out on the... Mm. Uh, what, what would you say his role was on, on, on Saturday and what do you expect from him this evening? Well, I mean, he he's, he's, a, young, he's a young guy finding his feet and I feel that, you know, he acquitted himself well, I thought, at the weekend. And just want to ho hopefully he takes that confidence from Saturday's game into today's game and, you know, be a bit more, be a bit, be a bit more positive, um, you know, and then, you know, just grow into the game, really. Mm, hopefully so. And he's got that experience of Darren Prattley alongside him, but also Hector, who's coming through and, and you know, growing into this Orient side. What do you expect from that uh, midfield setup tonight? I think it's going to be good for the two younger younger boys in there to have Prattley in there. Uh, he's been doing it for years now. He's really solid and he does bring a different dimension to the team. They, they do look more solid when he's in there. And when having the two youngsters in there, they're going to learn so much off him. And he's going to keep them, keep them switched on tonight because it's going to be a tough ask away there. And, and, and how important is it going to be to have that, that focus and that organisation with, with the team as, as good as Exeter? They're in great form. And, and to have this tough Tuesday night away fixture... That defence and that organisation in the middle of the park is going to be key. Listen, you always want to go to teams and win, but when you go to a place like Exeter, you have to be solid. You have to start well. You have to have a good shape. And Prattley's going to bring that in there. You've got solid, solid defence at the minute, looking good, not conceding too many goals. And that's going to be the key to getting a result there. Hopefully so. Uh, and obviously it is Exeter who are the opposition tonight. And the O's have already had some joy over Exeter earlier this season. It was the first home game of the season. It was a fantastic 3-0 victory. So let's remind ourselves of how the action played out on that afternoon.
hopefully those can find some of that goal scoring form again this evening and, and just looking at s some of the action there Jabbo the goal didn't just come from the strikers you obviously had Omar Beckles on the score sheet and the Theo Archibald how how important is it and and how how helpful is it when the goals do come from across the park and and you know uh, and we don't just have to rely on a striker it'd be nice to see a maybe a few players on the score sheet tonight that might be being greedy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, as a, as a centre forward myself, um, you know, when the goals are coming from across the team, it kind of sometimes takes a pressure of you, especially if you ain't been scoring in recent times. You know, in that, you know, someone else in midfield or wingers chipping in with goals, it kind of can relieve that pressure. Um, and then you just know the goals that, like even players and the manager knowing that, okay, strikers ain't at it today, but I've got I've got someone who's scoring in, in the middle of the park. So it does help, you know, the goals coming from everywhere. It really, it really helps the team. And obviously you've scored a, a few in your time. I can remember some in, a, in an O-shirt, of course, to, as well, Charlie. Um, and, and, you know, as, as the rest of the players trying to help out the strikers, it's, it's, it's always nice to score, I'm, I'm sure. But, you know, how... how at what point does it become desperation, though, when with the goals having dried up, so many players will be wanting to get themselves on the score sheet, but might be when you almost try too hard, I don't know. You've got to try hard and never to let it get to desperation, but as you, anyone who knows football knows that there is a point where you start doing things differently and probably not getting the results because you're not doing the right thing. As a striker, you just got to keep getting in the positions. How many times have we heard people say over the years, mm. more worried about a striker who's not getting in the positions mm. and not not so much scoring the goals? Mm. But yeah, if if uh, if someone can just get a goal, as we said earlier on from a set piece, mm. it just ends up drawing the other team out, makes them take unnecessary risks to try and get the game back, and then you might get two or three, and that'd be a dream tonight. Mm. Oh, two or three, oh my word, we'll be in Wonderland. Um, well, Richard J. Bourne has actually gotten in touch with that hashtag Orient Live. He hasn't got a question, he just wants to say Jabbo, Jabbo. I won't do the charm, but that's what he wanted to say. But of course, if you've got any uh, thoughts or questions that you want to get in to Jabbo or Charlie, then do tweet them in using that hashtag Orient Live to our Twitter account at LOFC Live. But now it's time to take a look at tonight's opposition, Exeter FC. So in goal for the Grecians this evening is number one, Cameron Dawson. Number three, Jack Sparks. Six, Sam Stubbs. Seven, and their captain, Matt Jay. Number eight, Archie Collins. Twelve, Josh Key. Fourteen, Timothy Dieng. Number 15, Kieran Phillips. Number 20, Giovanni Brown. 26, Pierce Sweeney. And number 38, Cheek Diabate. And on the bench for X to this evening, Scott Brown, Nigel Atangana, Sam Noom, Padraig Armand, Kyle Taylor, Jonathan Grounds, and Josh Coley. Um, and so we obviously know how, how well they're doing at the moment, Jabbo, but looking at that team sheet, is there anyone that stands out for you tonight? Yeah, for me, I mean, I've, I played with Giovanni Brown, um, who sort of plays in the term when I was with him, but he's, uh, he's playing just off the front man today, um, or up front even. He's a good player. You know, he likes to, um, he's got an eye for a forward pass, he's got an eye for an assist. He likes to drop deep, turn, I've never seen many better players than him receive it on the back foot and drive through. So definitely one to keep an eye on. And, and you said he, he's one that kind of he came from Colchester, but he, he kind of just appeared out of uh, out of non-league. Yeah, he appeared from he appeared out of non-league um, from St Neots, and um, he was picked up by Cambridge in a pre-season friendly, and he he just like ripped ripped the full back and then you know they're like well, we need to sign this guy he came into training he was it was magnificent and he's just grew and grew and grew and you know he's, he's very positive dynamic you know back foot turn you know got to keep an eye on him because he's got a bit i think seven or eight assists for um exit this season and he's not the only danger man in mm. the uh in the exit side though charlie is he no they've got jay i think he's captain and uh this guy is a real threat he he's got this knack he's not he's not the biggest but he always gets free in the box. He scored headers, gets up well, and it might help having the extra centre after. It may be one of the reasons because this guy can find space in, in the most crowded box. So he's got a lot of technique as well, scored some great goals, and he's going to need to be watched at all times. And you expect that Exeter are going to put in a slightly different performance today at their place than they did here in, in E10 back in, back in August? Yeah, but... You you see them things that if you've been in football involved in football long enough, you you seem to see, teams seem to get results against the same sort of team. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was a reason why that the result happened then, and you're hoping whatever happened that day, 
it's just some, a match-up that maybe favours Leighton Orient or a couple of positions at Elba. So they'll they'll take a lot from that that win early on in the season. I hope that it affects tonight. Hopefully so. But, I mean, they conceded three uh, on that game uh, that game here at the Bro Group Stadium. They've only conceded one goal in their last five. Um, we've obviously spoken about how well we're, or we hope to be set up defensively, mm-hmm. but breaking them down might be a tough task. Yeah, it might be a tough, 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 tough task, but then, you know, new Blaze starting, it's his debut, you know, go and make a name for yourself, go and make it happen, and this is the game to do it in. Hopefully so, and just picking up to the, the non-league chat we were having, there's there's uh, Sonny Fish on, on the bench for the Orient, who's just come, uh, well, from the, the, the basement of, of, of football, really, and there's a lot of excitement around the club about what the young Sonny can do. He's supposed to be strong, big, quick, uh, athletic, Having a, an unknown like that on your bench, it can it can be a good weapon to have in your arsenal at times. Well, me and Joe, I was just saying it earlier on. You see young lads playing men's football at a young age. That it can only be a good thing if if he's doing well week in week out at whatever level he's playing or playing against men in real physical game. You can make the step up now. And listen, Orin have got great coaches here. They're gonna they're gonna teach him everything he needs to know about the game. But being able to compete week in week out against people a lot older, a lot more physical, he's only going to set him in good stead for his career. Well, and on the subject of uh, uh, young Sonny Fish being in the squad for the first time tonight, it is, of course, the EFL uh, Youth Development Week, and we are celebrating all the great things about the academy. Um, and, and we've obviously got a, an academy product sat with us here in the studio. Um, looking at tonight's side as well, Jabbo, we've got seven academy graduates in the squad. Three of them are starting. That's That's pretty good for a club of, of this level to be able to produce your own talent and and let them go out there and, and do a job for the club. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, um, <clears throat> when I when I broke through as well, there was like a, a number of um, youth team graduates that made the bench and it's just lov- lovely to see the, the, the tradition still continues, you know. Um, you know, it's fantastic when you're, especially when you're local, you're in the area and you can just like start playing for your local club and it's a dream come true for many of them and you're in a, there's no better place to be doing that and be taught and to be coached than, than Orion. And, you know, looking at some of the players in the in the side, you've got Hex mm-hmm. Kipriano and Dan Happy starting tonight. Um, and, of course, Matt Young, who, who maybe hasn't got as much experience as the other two. Mm. But Hector and, and Dan, they're both so key to this side and, and what they what they can do and, and how good they are. And it's, you know, we've produced them. And, and does that almost hold more significance, do you think, and maybe up their, their performance levels a tad? Yes, definitely. If, you, if you're an academy, if you come through the academy, it just means something to you to play for the first team. And... Leighton Orient's got a great history of producing great players. And I remember when I joined, it was the number one point in getting back up into the league was to, to protect that and keep these young players coming through. And I've seen some really great players come through over the last few years since I've been involved with the club. And I've been lucky enough to, to coach a few of them in, involved with the academy. It's, it's been brilliant and uh, long may it continue. And looking back to some of those players that you you remember coming through, you played alongside a lot of them in that promotion winning campaign. And I think that that alone just shows how key it is to having a good academy. We had Karoma Happy, you had Miles Judd and and Sam Ling all playing really key parts that season. And and it won us the title. Yeah, and that was the that was the most important thing you said there. They played key parts. They wasn't just bit part players. We had Dan played week in, week out. Josh Caroma was probably one of our key players the whole season. And it's not just what you do on the match on the Saturday, it's what they was doing day in, day out. The key to our success was having a squad of players who was competitive every day in training. And they were a massive part of that. And it will be now for, for years to come. Well, we are celebrating the academies in the EFL. And we've got a short video to celebrate that. <laughs>
hopefully we'll see some more goals from the young uh, O's Academy graduates this evening. But of course, don't forget, if you're watching along to our free pre-match show on YouTube, tonight's match is available to stream in the UK. So head over to the Match Centre and the Orient website to purchase your match passes, where we'll shortly be joining uh, Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock for tonight's one. But before we do head up to them, let's remind ourselves of this evening's lineup as we face Exeter City. In goal for the O's, number 22, Lawrence Vigoru. Number five, Dan Happy. Six, Adam Thompson. Ten, Frank Nuble. Number 14, Otis Khan. Fifteen, Alex Mitchell. Sixteen, Aaron Drynan. Eighteen, and wearing the armband this evening is Darren Prattley. Nineteen, Omar Beckles. Twenty-one, Matt Young. And number 26, Hector Kiprianu. So the three academy graduates in that lineup there. And on the subs bench for the O's as well is number 27, Reese Byrne. Four, Callum Riley. 17, Dan Moss. 20, Royal Satiriu. 24, Jaden Sweeney. 25, Shad Oji. And 33, Sonny Fish. Um, so just going back to it then, Jab, a lot of big calls from Kenny as well with, mm. with some of the players not in there. Shad find himself on the bench. Mm. Um, it's, it's big calls, but do you think Kenny knows that he needs to make some big calls and, and try and change the form around. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think sometimes you need to make those big calls to, you know, to help those players, the senior players to sort of like think, okay, you know what, I'm out. I need to find my form to get back in. It just shakes things up. And it's, and it's great to show good faith in the young players. You know, they're, they're going to fight for the team. They're going to fight for the manager. And, you know, they've been given the opportunity and, and they'll repay the manager's faith. Hopefully uh, you're right on that one. Um, Looking at kind of the time that's gone without the O's picking up three points, it, it's been made longer because of the, the lack of games you had over the Christmas period and COVID. But at what point does, as a player, do you maybe forget that winning feel, feeling and f almost forget how to win? And, and how do you go about combating that, Charlie? Listen, winning's not hard. It's, it's very hard. It's a tough thing to do. You've got you've to be on it all week, every week. And these boys will be feeling the pressure because... As you say, with a bit of unlucky, it's been a, been a long time since they won. But they'll they'll be really looking forward to tonight. I'm really hoping that they they can change the, the fortunes of the team. You almost feel maybe a draw. We've had so many draws, and, and it has been so long without the win. You want to see the Irish go out there and tack it and take the game to Exeter tonight. Yeah, but you've got to remember going away to Exeter on a Tuesday night and getting a draw is a good result for every team in this league. So you can't go gung ho and. Looking at the team, I, I think there's a, Kenny's been thinking about how tough it's going to be to break them down and maybe the way to, to get a result there is, is stopping them from getting easy chances and easy goals and maybe seeing what happens on the counter-attack or maybe set pieces. Do you think that will be key for tonight? Maybe nicking a goal or, or, or getting a set piece? It's, it, it, you do feel as though it's going to be a tough task, Jabbo. Yeah, it does look, like, look that way. I mean, the way the team seems to be set up, um, you know, to maybe soak a bit of pressure up and, you know, go into maybe into this half time and early second half with, you know, still in the game and then, you know, take your moments. And I think it's going to be a key key time this in this game to really, the moments are going to be key. They certainly are. And of course, if you, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain and hopefully it will be rainbows for the O's this evening. It's time now to head up to St. James's Park as we join Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. <laughs> for Matt Taylor's squad during the transfer window. But what was important, there was only one departure, which meant that Matt Jay and Josh Key, who were linked to big clubs in the January transfer window, has stayed here for Exeter's promotion push. There was only one exit, and that was George Way, the defender, joined late night on loan. He can't play against his parent club. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. 